Hi, thank you for tuning in to the latest Hurricane Tracker app video update recorded Thursday, August 21st at around 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Well, thanks for joining. We wanted to do a uh, fairly brief video update, although it may end up being about 8 or 10 minutes or so, but wanted to do a video update on Invest 90L as it does have quite a bit of attention as it is slowly beginning to organize here east of the Lesser Antilles and there is somewhat of a chance it could move closer towards uh, populated areas as we get into early next week. So we want to go ahead and cover the storm in depth and give you all the latest information and cover the computer model guidance to give you a few scenarios about what may or may not happen over the next several days. First and foremost, uh, there is a high chance of development over the next five days. In fact, a 70% chance of development and the storm could develop anywhere within this red shaded area as outlined by the National Hurricane Center. Uh, this cone is not necessarily a, a forecast track cone, but it's a, uh, a shaded region as indicated by the Hurricane Center, meaning this storm could develop here uh, north of Puerto Rico. It could wait to develop east of Florida. So anywhere within this region, the National Hurricane Center has a high chance of development. The hurricane hunters uh, investigated the system this afternoon. They did find a small area of low pressure. It is still poorly defined. And um, they even found a small area of tropical storm force winds on the northeast side of the area of low pressure. The system is moving off towards the west-northwest at about 20 miles per hour. And environmental conditions are expected to be you know, conducive for development over the next few days as it continues to move off towards the west northwest. The main factor over the next couple of days will be the mountainous terrain of Hispaniola. If this developing area of low pressure moves over the, the high mountains of Haiti and the Dominican Republic, it could easily disrupt the uh, organization and uh, you know definitely prevent the storm from developing in the short term. A lot of the latest computer models are actually showing a track just north of the islands, but it's not a guarantee at this point. And uh, through the next two days, 48 hours, the National Hurricane Center is only giving a 50-50 chance of development. But as we get into days three, four, and five, there's actually a 70% chance of development up in the high category. So the storm likely will continue to struggle, slowly try to organize uh, over the next couple of days. When systems are this large, let me flip over to the... Uh, satellite imagery, when you have a large system like this, they uh, tend to take a lot of time to consolidate and uh, form one single uh, pronounced area of low pressure. So we think that will continue to occur as it moves off towards the west-northwest, generally somewhere in this direction here over the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. But you can see some banding is becoming evident in the latest satellite imagery. And even some upper level outflow may be trying to take shape. And uh, we just don't have a lot of deep thunderstorm activity near the weak area of low pressure. And until we get thunderstorms sustaining around the center, the Hurricane Center is not going to upgrade this to a tropical depression or to tropical storm crystal ball. So we'll have to monitor the satellite trends very closely over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours to see what unfolds. Now we want to take a look at all the models and kind of explain what they're showing and uh, different couple, a uh, few different scenarios that can happen as we get into later this weekend and into early next week. Basically, throughout the short term, throughout the next uh, 48 hours or so, uh, fairly confident on the forecast track here. It should move towards the west-northwest, just over Puerto Rico or north of Puerto Rico, again, slowly trying to develop bringing heavy rainfall, a few inches are possible uh, over the next 24 hours here in the Northeastern Caribbean Islands as well as Puerto Rico and then pushing into the Dominican Republic as we get into later in the day tomorrow and into Saturday. The tropical models, uh, which are usually not the most accurate, uh, there is a consensus this afternoon that the storm will turn north and then northeast out to sea. Unfortunately, it's not that clear cut and simple and we'll show you why. We're going to take a look at uh, three, four, or five of the most uh, followed and the most accurate models. The first is the UK MET model. This was the first model to pick up and actually show development uh, on this Invest once it was out here in the Western Atlantic. It's been pretty uh, straightforward over the last several runs of uh, the system moving off towards the west-northwest. 
uh, generally towards southeast, the Bahamas, southeast Florida, and the Florida Straits. Another model that's showing a westward solution is the h wharf model. It performed very well with Hurricane Arthur. It's also been performing very well out in the Pacific, and it's also been very confident with a system, with a strengthening system moving up through the Bahamas, possibly affecting uh, South Florida sometime Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, this is showing a fairly strong system. I would ignore the intensity forecast of this model as it's usually a little bit overboard, but uh, just wanted to give you the general idea. It's still continuing to show a, a westward track uh, towards Florida. The third model, uh, over the last couple of runs, it's been showing a uh, solution where the system would get picked up by an upper level trough and be swung out into the open Atlantic. In fact, this was the first model to show a recurve of the system. But as of the run this afternoon, it's now showing a more pronounced area of high pressure developing north of the storm, which would act to move the storm more towards the uh, west and then eventually out over into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. But I do want to stress this is one of the most unreliable models uh, has been over the last few years. The two models we look at the most are the GFS American model and the European model. I want to first take a look at the GFS American model. Uh, here's where it has uh, Invest 96L on um, Tuesday, so early next week. It does have the system sitting here in the Bahamas, and it basically stalls it out in the Bahamas here in this area for about two to three days. And this model is also showing a developing ridge of high pressure, and I'll kind of draw it out here for you, north of the storm. And it's also showing a trough of low pressure, I'll draw it here for you, which is a weakness in the atmosphere. Tropical Cyclone 101, basically, tropical cyclones will not move into areas of high pressure. They will try to propagate and track towards areas of low pressure. So the GFS model yesterday was showing a definite recurve out into the open Atlantic. Today, it's showing the system slowing down quite a bit and, again, just kind of stalling out here for several days and then eventually finding just enough area of low pressure to be picked up and moved off towards the northeast. The European model, let me flip over to uh, the European model here. Early next week on Tuesday is showing a deeper area of low pressure. Let me back up in time a little bit. Okay, so this is for Sunday and Monday. Here's the uh, trough of low pressure, which is much further south than these other models are indicating and a lot deeper, a little bit stronger. And because of this, the European model forecasts the system to be picked up and moved off towards the northeast and out to sea. But with the latest run of the European model, it's now throwing a wrench into the mix. It shows the trough of low pressure lifting out and another area of high pressure building into the east of the storm, which acts to push the storm off towards the northwest before this next trough of low pressure moves in and kicks it out into the open Atlantic. Let me back up here. Here we go. So the latest European model brings the storm into the Bahamas, moves it northeast. High pressure builds back in, moves it off towards the northwest, and then moves it back out eventually due to another trough out into the open Atlantic. So as you can see, after explaining all of these models from, the, from here, through the UK Met, the HWARF, the CMC, the GFS, and the European, there's many different scenarios. There's many different options. Likely what it's going to come down to is timing, and it usually does when you have tropical systems. If this if trough of low pressure is, uh, let me change the color here. If this trough of low pressure is weaker or further to the north, the system would be more likely to move off towards the west, closer to the United States, as some of these other models are forecasting. It's all going to depend on uh, how fast the storm moves off towards the west-northwest, how strong it gets, how deep of a trough sets up over the western Atlantic, how strong the trough is, and then eventually how far east this high pressure ridge can extend out over into the Atlantic Ocean to create a, a blocking wall, so to speak, 
So as you can see, it's basically one big mathematical equation. Once we get beyond three, four days in the computer models, that equation gets a lot harder to solve. There's so many components. So for anyone to say right now that this system is definitely going to curve out to sea, or it's going to definitely go west and make landfall in the United States, just absolutely untrue. There's no way to forecast that at this point. The science is not good enough. We don't know enough yet about long-range tropical cyclone uh, forecasting to say with any certainty that it's going to take uh, path A or path B. Bottom line is if you live anywhere in these areas, especially the Bahamas, that's looking like the area of big, biggest concern at this point. Um, you're, we have you under an elevated risk, meaning you need to really be paying close attention to this storm because all the models are showing it developing in this region. But really anywhere from the Carolinas down through Florida and the eastern Gulf of Mexico needs to be watching this very closely in case we have a weaker area of low pressure trough of low pressure over the Atlantic and a stronger area of high pressure build in and force the storm to the west. Want to end the video with a, uh, a storm from 2004 Hurricane Jean. If you live in Florida, many of you know this storm took you by surprise. Uh, this system was forecasted by the models initially to move north and northeast out into the open Atlantic and eventually high pressure built in and uh, on top of the storm kind of like the uh, CMC model is showing in this solution. High pressure built in on top of the storm and forced it straight west into Florida before another trough of low pressure came in and picked it up. So you can see the storm stalled out, made a loop, and turned back towards the west. This has happened before. It is not impossible. But at this point, five to eight days out, it's going to be pretty much impossible to determine where the high pressure ridge will be where the trough of low pressure will be, where the storm will be, and how strong all three of these uh, components uh, will be um, you know, once we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We probably won't know more until we get into this weekend. So stay, stay tuned here at the Hurricane Tracker app. I know this video was long, but there was a lot to show you, a lot to talk about. And uh, bottom line, if you live in those areas we mentioned, just know this system is out there. Know that some models are developing into a tropical cyclone. And, uh, of course, we will keep you updated as often as we can. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Have a great day.